This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex, this is the Ramble, and we're here until midnight tonight on the east coast of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Larry Bubbles Brown, hello Lawrence. Hello Alex. How are you doing? Good, good. Uh, I had uh... I always like to uh, hit you with a question when we open up the show. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. This might be a little dark, but I know I've never asked you this, but and I've never heard you talk about it. Uh, how much? Because uh, there's so much anti-Semitism going on right now in the world. I just wondered uh, how much did you experience that growing up? Well, not much, because I hate Jews myself. So. <laughs> And, and believe me, there's nobody that hates Jews more than other Jews because we, we know what we're all about. No, I, uh, to be serious with you, um, uh, have I ever faced anti-Semitism on a very, on very small little incremental levels, you know, like when I was a kid, you know, and I grew up in North Beach and it was an all-Italian neighborhood. Uh, once or twice I was called a dirty Jew, you know, but I didn't let it affect me. I, I guess I was. I had the feeling that hey, these people are just stupid, and they're saying a stupid thing, you know. And I, and I, I, I bathe every day, so how am I a dirty Jew? Um, so that that was part of it. Uh, the other part of it was that um, I never really, you know, if it was going on, it was done silently, and I never felt it. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any time that I went out for a job, and I don't think there was, where I was ever, you know, uh, prevented from getting the job because I was a Jew. And, um, but I, I, I do remember growing up when I was a kid, when I was in grade school primarily, uh, getting the dirty Jew thing and, you know, kids going, Jew, you know. And, uh, but then again, I had a lot of other friends who didn't do that. And I just felt to myself that why should I hold it against my friends uh, and everybody else because somebody individually called me that. So I, I, had a very, I never had that feeling of, of, of anti-Semitism coming at me. Now, if I had grown up in New York, it might be a different story. You know, uh, I grew up in California where Jews were very rare when I was growing up. We had a, a Jewish community center in Marin, which you may have played at. It's a big place now. Used to be yeah, a little, yeah, yeah. used to be a little building in San Rafael House that had been converted into a uh, into a, uh, a Jewish community center with a synagogue in it. And maybe there were 50 members in the whole county of the Jewish community center. Wow. So, you know, that's how rare we were. So, I mean, we were so rare that they would invite us over and then see if they could secretly force us to eat pork. You know. Um, what are we having for dinner tonight, dear? Well, we're, I made a lovely pork roast. Can you eat that, Alex? And I go, <laughs> I love pork. <laughs> but... I never really felt a, a great deal of anti-Semitism towards me. Um, and when I came to New York, uh, there, if the anti-Semitism existed, it existed outside of the Jewish community, inwardly to the Jewish community. And so when I came to New York, it was the first time. I'd always felt out of place when I was growing up in Marin County because I was Jewish. And were, nobody else was Jewish. I knew a couple other Jewish kids, and that was it. We were an oddity. When I moved, and, and also because I was Jewish, girls didn't find me as attractive. Okay? Now I moved to New York, and I'm getting laid to beat the band. 
<laughs> you know, because if you were Jewish, and and Jewish women in New York, I always knew, knew it, Jewish women in California just had big noses. That's all I remember. You know, funny noses. And um, uh, they, they, they were kind of like, well, they were okay, but, you know, you went to California. They were exotic. They went to Cali New York, rather. They were exotic. And... <laughs> You know, I was I was in my element. I suddenly realized this was my home. This was my place I should have been living all my life. And my mother was from New York, so I kind of had that angst anyway. Yeah. And I got along beautifully in New York. And uh, never felt anti-Semitism here. Oh, 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 there goes my watch. Everything. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. It's my wife. Listen to this. Hello, dear. Hi, I'm talking to Larry Bubbles Brown. Can you call me back later? Yeah. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. That's off my watch. You ready for that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I know. <laughs> Everything rang at once here. I had a phone. I don't know what you called me about. Probably like, what are we having for dinner, dear? You've never been married, have you? Not even close. What do you mean not even close? You never had anybody where you went, well, maybe I'll, maybe I'll ask her. I had, I think I've had five girlfriends in my life, and I just remember I really, that, I didn't even enjoy that. It was just someone around me too much. I couldn't take it. So. But, so all you care about is getting laid? Uh, when I was younger, yeah, but I was a... Uh, yeah, I just never felt that bond that some people want to be together with someone 24-7, so maybe I'm a brooding loner. Well, no, I mean, uh, you're, who, of course you're a loner. Gee, <laughs> maybe I'm, I'm a moody drifter. <laughs> I figured that one out years ago. You haven't? Um, I'm, no. <laughs> I'm talking about I figured out that you were a loner, you know. But you're, you, you, you've always been kind of a loner, haven't you? Yes. So that would not like, make you want to say, like, get down on Well, stand-up, I kind of, I have like a social life with the stand-up and being in the club, but then I like to come home and be alone for a long time, you know. But what, what, what? Uh, for instance, there was never a woman where you went, oh, yeah, this is, you know, you never even went steady with somebody? No, I had maybe a couple of women stayed overnight once, and I just uh, uh, couldn't take it. Ugh. Really? Now, but yeah. mind you, folks, we're talking to Larry Bowles Brown, and he is not gay. <laughs> is that? Is, am I right to say that? I think I'm not gay. Maybe I should have been. <laughs> Maybe you should have been, but he's not gay. And you did pursue the women. I mean, you know, for sexual purposes. Oh, pursued him. I wish the, the male sex drive, I wish I had. There's so much time you waste to make a fool of yourself chasing women oh. when you're young, you know. Well, I said that the great thing about age and the prostate operation <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> was that it's given me my dignity back because yeah. <laughs> when, when you've got a fully functioning sexual libido, I got to tell you, I would say if you asked me how many times a day I thought of sex in my prime, and that would be in San Francisco doing that morning show, I would say it was almost constant. Absolutely. I mean, doing a great show was important. Making a living was important. You know, getting enough sleep was important. But getting laid, that was primary. Am I right? Yeah, well, they say that uh, everything a man does to become successful, everything in his life, that's all geared to getting sex. Yeah. I mean, can, can you imagine that? I mean, now, how about women? I think uh, they're different, aren't they? Very different. They, they, uh, they, are, they control the sex. They, are, they select who they have sex with, whereas we would... <laughs> Pretty much hit anything. Well, it's the old line that uh, Lenny Bruce had, we'd fuck mud, you know. <laughs> um, lacking anything else. All right. But, I mean, uh, I, I know that uh, I, uh, you know, I thought about it constantly. It was just, you know, and, and I wish I could have had a, like a switch and turned it on and off because I think I might have been more productive if I could turn it off for a while and just get some work mm -hmm. done. 
But, you know, I'd be working for Christ's sake. I'd be typing something, writing a letter or something like that. In the middle of it, I felt a compulsion to jerk off. <laughs> now, is that wrong? Am I, am I some kind of pervert? Is that, is that out of line? No, I think that's per probably every guy. So we're, we, we have this primal thing where we're constantly looking to get laid. And if you're gay, you're looking, still looking to get laid like crazy. I mean, that was the problem. Sure. That was the problem with the bathhouses in San Francisco. You get a bunch of guys who are having sex with a bunch of guys, and it's nonstop. It's just, you know, it's, cr it's got to be crazy uh, because it's, it's guys with guys' libidos having sex with other guys who have guys' libidos. Can you imagine that? No yeah. wonder out of all of that, out of that, and I'm going to call it this this tepid swamp of bacteria that AIDS came to be. And supposedly it started spreading in San Francisco from patient zero. Um, and there were guys during this period of time who would point to the, uh, to the bathhouse and go, oh, well, I've had sex in there about 100 times this year. Wow. 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 And guys, see, guys also don't say no. Women, women keep us honest. They go, well, I don't know, maybe. No, I don't think so. Well, we'll see. Yeah, you, you definitely have to work for it with a woman. <laughs> you, you have to work for it. And they kept us honest. But if you're, if you're gay, if you're a gay guy, there's nobody to keep you honest. You're, there are other gay guys, and they don't want to be kept honest. And uh, it was just a, it was a, it was, it was a big time to be had by all. Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> well, that's why when you see, when people used to come on Oprah and all these radio talk shows and say, "Oh, I'm a I'm a man, I'm a sex addict," I, no, I think, "No, you're a man." <laughs> that's what I, I always was bothered by that, not because I was a sex addict, but when they would do that kind of show and say, "You know, oh, it's sex. Uh, we're trying to cure sex addiction." You want to cure sex addiction? The only way you're going to cure it is with a bullet to the guy's head. You know, that's or, the only way. Or a, cast, or a castration. Right, right. And I think it's because, I'll tell you, I think it's because we, uh, we try to inhibit this action by guys. That we've come out with serial killers and people who do sex crimes and things like that. Uh, because a lot of that is guys who feel guilty about having sexual thoughts you know so it, it's really it, it, you know uh, I, I, I and I wonder what it would be like to grow up being a woman that's what I wonder you know uh, is, is it completely different are they more productive because they don't have this sex drive like do, do you ever feel it came between you and your productivity I think it's uh, the sex drive is what I read was that people that suppress their sex drive actually are very productive because they channel it in another direction. Mm -hmm. But so you, yeah, sense. so you had the sex drive, but you, you just never wanted any woman to stay overnight. <laughs> yeah, I had the sex drive, but I didn't. <laughs> so, so I would imagine those relationships didn't last very long because they, they didn't were, last. Yeah, they're all very torturous. But well, because they want to get emotionally intimate. Yeah, the, well, the and, emotional thing of sex is really a big to women, whereas with men, it's just like a, yeah. A, but totally you never found different. somebody that you really liked enough that you said, "Hey, I want this person around me." I mean, they they kind of like me, you know. I mean, I, I, I'm a serial marrier, actually. I'm a serial husband. Cause I got yeah, you've been pretty good time. with that. I've just had... No, I've been lousy <laughs> with it. Wait a minute, I've been lousy with it. I got married four times. That's being lousy at marriage. <laughs> but you liked it. Well, that, all that seems to indicate is that you're going to keep doing it until you get it right. You know? The first, yeah, it was practice. It was practice. Yeah, I, I can consider my other three wives practice. Yeah. And this one, <laughs> this one, we have we have a wonderful relationship, and uh, we're married to each other. But we're two older people, and every now and then we look at each other and say, "So this is what it's come to, huh?" Yeah, you know. I mean, this is where it where where it ends. You know. So you you want to get divorced? Well, what's what's 
what what's that about? You know, it just doesn't make sense to get divorced. So, so uh, this is my last marriage. Yeah. And uh, well, it sounds like a good one. It's yeah. I have to say, comparing it to the rest, uh, maybe it's the best. Yeah, yeah. No, it isn't. It is the best. Um, but. Uh, you know, and that's not putting down my other wives. I mean, my, uh, my late wife, Ronnie, uh, was a very nice, wonderful person, and I was the asshole. I was the one that started cheating because she knew me when I was a nothing, and all of a sudden I became a something. And when you become a something, all of a sudden the world of sex opens up to you. You become more attractive to people. And I, I, as a kid who had low self-esteem, I couldn't handle that. I did not handle that well. If a woman just winked at me, I was off and running. So, you know, she couldn't take that, and I don't blame her. You know. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, did you feel by, not, by, by getting married or by, well, I mean, we're, we're talking about something simple. Having somebody stay over for the night that, you know, you're, you, you, that, that they were going to cause a problem to you? I just felt trapped. That's why. So, I, if a woman stayed one night, I felt trapped. Like, imagine how I would have felt if I'd gotten married, and then you. Well, did you? Mixing your. Yeah. Did you feel? Did you finances and everything? You know. Well, yeah, but the, you know, just because they stay over for the night doesn't mean you have to marry them. In fact, no, but then they. Here's what women do when you go out with them. They, uh, they never. They never say, hey, we're in a monogamous relationship, but they stay over a couple of nights, then it's kind of assumed, you know? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Uh, I, um, uh, I, I used to like having women stay over. I, 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 because I was always a, you know, the, even though I was a very highly sexual person, at the same time I had a um, kind of a, um, a feeling of uh, decency about it, you know? And I, I just never... I always kind of was a romantic of sorts, too. You know, I could fall in love very easily. Do you ever fall in love? Uh, I had a strong, a strong crushes. Strong crushes. Yes, and uh, that's, uh, I've been trying to find this out. 30 years ago, I read about a study that said that when people meet and they think they fall in love, they said they, it's actually, there's some when you find someone you're really attracted to, your body releases endorphins and all kinds of shit, and they said it, it, it literally wears off in exactly 91 days. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah they, they did a couple, of, a couple of college studies I read about that. Yeah, it wears off in 91 days. So you fall, if you fall in love, at the end well, of what 91... What people think is love is just, yeah, it's just a... Uh, well, I always said that I always considered love to be an, a form of insanity. You know, you really do go crazy when you're in love. Mm -hmm. You start swooning don't, and, no, uh, you know... I, you, yeah, you don't make good... <laughs> not a good time to make financial decisions when you think you're in love. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, don't sign the prenup. Uh, you know, I mean, what I'm saying is that I, I think that... Uh, uh, that, that it is a form of insanity, love. Yeah. But it's a nice mm -hmm. form of insanity, you know. I mean, it, it's a pleasurable form of insanity, but I think you're really right about that, you know, love thing after 91 days because I've had that happen where after 91 days I kind of, you know, I remember one woman that walked into my life and I was just enchanted by her and my heart was pounding, and I, you know, that kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. And and then uh, she moves in, and one day she's on the floor of my apartment, looking at some record albums. And I looked at her and, uh, and I said to myself, "How do I get her out of here?" <laughs> <laughs> really, really. Uh, all of a sudden, I went from this unrequited love, right, to how do I get her out of here? <laughs> It must have been the 91st day. <laughs> <laughs> it was the 91st day, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have had some relationships, though, where I've had these great romantic moments, and they kept going for years. I mean, I had one relationship with a woman that lasted for, I think, 11 years, was it? 
think it was close to 11 years. Uh, you know who she was. You, you saw her with me a lot. Uh, but oh, yeah, we, we yeah. in those 11 years, we broke up 11 times. And it was, a, you know, and, and every time we got back together, it was really, you know, it was this ooing and eyeing and, oh, my God, you know, and having highly romantic moments and big depths, just absolute horrid breakups. And, oh, it was, it was 11 years of my life that... Uh, I think it was 11 years, yeah. The on and off, you know. And then people say, well, did you ever cheat on her? And I went, well, I don't know. And they said, what do you mean? I said, well, I would break up with her, and then I'd find people to go out with, and then we'd get back together again. But then I had to kind of keep seeing those older people that I had been seeing to kind of wean <laughs> them off of me so I could go back to her. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, so that that was, I said, no, I, 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 I don't know if I cheated on her. I don't know if there was a period of time where we were going together and that I was having sex with other people or whether I was, it was one of these people in between. So, anyway, you know. But you've never had any of that, right? No, and then I do feel that when you, it, it felt like a responsibility to me, like, oh, someone loves you, then, God, you're responsible for their happiness, and I just know it's not going to last, and there's... When women start crying, I just that that I'm sure you had that in the breakup, and they start crying or something. That's horrible to go through that. Well, have I had to go through breaking up with other people, doing the breaking up? No, I've had most women break up with me. You know, either that or it just kind of slowed down and dwindled to nothing. You know what I'm saying? That he will women women will actually come up to your face and break up. Men, we just kind of uh, make ourselves unavailable, so it kind of slowly dies. Yeah, yeah. Well, you do everything you can to make the person want to go away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you've done that, right? Yeah, yeah. I just I make women myself break unavailable. Up with me. Yeah, yeah. That's you know. But don't, that, is, are the times when you regret that? Or are you happy when with that? Nothing. You know what I'm saying? I think, yeah, I don't. Well, I think I'm women, happy, women happier than I would have been if I'd been with somebody. Up. So. Men, we just kind really of, uh, make ourselves mm -hmm. unavailable. You know, so I, I don't know if I would be as happy yeah. as I yeah, am. You do everything you can to make the person you say to go Marjorie. Away. Well, it sounds yeah. like you've got a great yeah. relationship. Yeah. I think you've beaten uh, the odds. Oh, it's a terrible, it's a terrible, it's a terrible relationship. We fight all the time. Yeah, you know, but we we know that in the end, we love each other. There must be a reason why we're not going anywhere. Where, I think I'm you know? happy, happier than so, I Well, maybe you fight because you got a little passion. That's good. Really? I don't know if we fight because we have a lot of passion. We have as happy as we get. She, was she, as you get older, okay, you get grouchier. Oh, it's a terrible. Okay. So call our fights really. Fight all the time. Yeah. You know. But we we know that in the end, I mean, yeah, it's turned out okay. I I I could do worse. If she's listening, dear, I could do worse. <laughs> yeah, that's a great that's a great compliment. Yeah, I could do worse. You know, I I could have married Eva Braun. You know, I could have done worse. But you could have uh, been in the bunker. <laughs> and of course, you had all those comedy groupies who probably came on to you like crazy, right? Uh, there weren't a ton, but uh, there were certainly more than that I met that I, if I hadn't gotten into comedy. Yeah. Because I, I know a lot of women who would, who would always say to me uh, they were attracted to you. Uh, and, and everybody wonders why, because you got the hangdog look and everything, but you had a certain charisma, you know. Really? I, the, women that I, the women that were attracted to me actually, maybe this was part of the problem, they were actually more depressed than I was. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just real downers. You could both I mean, sit uh, around and be depressed. Yeah. Yeah, I just, uh, I think I'd like, if a woman was a little more upbeat, that was the easier to be around, for sure. Yeah. Well, if there's any woman out there listening to this program who wants to go on with Larry <laughs> Bubbles Brown, I've got his number, okay? So, uh, you know. Anyway, hey, listen, I think we've run out of time here. I think we ran long today. We ran long on a couple of things that we did here. But anyway, we went long. But talking about love and Larry Brown, that, that, uh, that's an interesting discussion. <laughs> it's, Remember that time I was on your show and Dr. Ruth was on and she thought I was deeply disturbed? Did she say that? Oh, she said on the air, yeah. 
What did she? What did she say? Yeah, she said, you're dead. very ill. I think it was because I didn't want to spend the night with a woman. She, oh, you're very ill. Wow. That's a compliment, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Should have put that in the resume. <laughs> it's like, like uh, Julia Child, if she said to me, want to have dinner? You know, it would be great. <laughs> anyway, hey, thank you, Larry. Thank you, Alex. See you next week, pal. You got it. Bye. This is GabNet. The Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ah, there he was, Larry Bubbles Brown, ladies and gentlemen. We always love talking with Larry and having him on board here. Ah, let me nestle down into my chair. You know something, my wallet, I got my wallet in these pants, and the wallet is like right where I'm sitting. <laughs> And uh, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you see, I mean, also, I, is it, I, guess, I guess this is all right. Yeah, it's okay. All right. Uh, you know, I'm just worried that I will pop up over the picture. Yeah. Anyway, hello, everybody. How are you? Uh, I'm Alex Bennett, and uh, this is uh, the uh, program. Last night when I got off, I don't know, I was just exhausted. I mean, I was loopy. And I finally figured it's this drug I'm taking. God, it's making me just loopy as hell. But um, so if I get tired during this show, like I did last night, uh, I'm not going to call it off. I'm just going to let you guys keep talking. Um, I may be, maybe I'm getting too old for this. I don't know. Maybe I am. So anyway, uh, let me see here. Uh, so um, anyway, I have a big announcement next week. Uh, I'm going to make it on Monday on our 4 o'clock show, and then I will make it again here, so if you missed it, you're not going to have any problem with it. Uh, but it's a, it's a major announcement in my career, uh, and I, I want you to know about it because uh, it, uh, it, uh, it, uh, it could be a very nice thing. Well, it is a very nice thing already, but it could be eventually as well. Anyway, uh, let's, uh, let's go to our uh, citizen panel. I'll uh, just admit them all here, because they all look to be kosher to me. And let me see here, as they come popping on, uh, oh, and uh, Josh Wheeler's back from vacation too. We see him here. There is, uh, of course, um, uh, uh, Jeff, and uh, there's Kevin, and there's Alan, and there's Charlie, and there's Josh. How was your vacation, Josh? It's pretty good. Yeah, you went where? Um, I went to North Dakota for mm -hmm. a few days, mm -hmm. and then came back east a little bit, and we went to we stayed in Duluth, Minnesota, and we went around Lake Superior a little bit. Lake Superior. Oh, that's yeah. very nice. Yeah, Did you see any historical spots? I mean, was there something the reason why you were taking the trip you were taking? In particular, a little bit, yeah. I mean, we went to a couple of spots the National Park Service operate. We went to Theodore Roosevelt mm -hmm. National Park, both the North Union and the South, and uh, we did the other two spots in North Dakota that the uh, uh, Park Service runs. We went to a what's called a Knife River Indian Village mm -hmm. Reservation, which is like a restored. Uh, Indian community and trading community, and we mm -hmm. went to went to a few other spots like that. Uh, we went to Grand Portage National Monument, all the way up the Canadian border, which was a restored trading post for the fur trade. Uh, the National Park Service runs, and uh, I went to Fort Buford in North Dakota, uh, which is just this. The Park Service doesn't run it. The historical. Uh, the state of North Dakota does, but uh, it's known for a few things. Yeah. Uh, I think um, most notably was uh, uh, now I've forgotten the name. <laughs> I can't, but uh, oh, Sitting Bull. Uh, Sitting Bull was held there for a while. Uh, that's where he was held when the U.S. Army had him captive mm -hmm. after he came back from exile in Canada. I mean, yeah. you know, just stuff, just driving around. North Dakota, basically. Did, did, in your historical state. opinion, did Sitting Bull get a rotten deal? Well, yeah. I mean, 
Yeah, I mean, I think pretty much all the Plains Indians <laughs> got a pretty bad deal. Well, I, I think there's some um, truths about Custer, for instance, that he that? The, about Custer, that he was kind of going around killing Indians like crazy. Yeah, I mean, he was uh, a bit of a loose cannon, you know. I mean, he was a yeah. fiery guy and uh, pretty, uh, I mean, I'm definitely not an expert on it, but I mean, he was a fiery person and mm -hmm. kind of a big mouth, if you will, you know, and uh, he was just one of those kind of individuals, and uh, he got himself into a lot of trouble, ultimately got him, you know, but got him killed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we just explored the whole state. We went, we just really went to some out of the way places this year because everywhere else was just going to be really busy. I know a little bit more about Custer than I probably should. You know, I, I've obtained all kinds of information as years have gone on. And uh, there was a, uh, a major Reno who was supposed to back him up and got there too late. Am I right about yeah. that? Yeah, I mean, I, you know. Uh, and there was also a well, major Benteen as well, really, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I mean, it was never my, like, the, the Indian Wars of, like, the 1870 and the 1880s and relocation and all that. Mm -hmm. It was never, like, my favorite topic. So, you know, I never put a ton of time into it. I mean, yeah. other than, you know, I obviously have the overall grasp in the background and everything now, I mean, now you know, your I, your big uh, thing is you want to visit every national park yeah i mean we want to pretty much visit not just every park but all all the sites that are run by the park service so all the all the parks and then all the national historic sites and you know monuments and, mm -hmm. and some of them are battlefields some of them are i mean pretty much everywhere i mean so we have some states where we've been to every single thing. That's so that means you're going to have to get to Alaska eventually. Uh, yeah, eventually, right. Yeah. Yeah. There, yeah, there's a lot of, I think there's seven oh, national parks. What a, what, a great, what a great goal that is. Hello, by the way, to Jeff. Hello to uh, Kevin, who's joined us. Alan, who's here tonight. Uh, Charlie Walsh, who's here, who's here every night. I got to hand it to Charlie. You know, what a support. Perfect attendance. Perfect, Perfect attendance. attendance. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. yeah. Uh, and of course, Josh and uh, Brian uh, Neary. Hello, Brian. How are you today? Good. It's Friday. Really? Hey, Josh. Josh, do you do you guys plan this stuff out? I mean, when you guys go, do you have a map and you guys just try to hit bam, bam, bam? Where you guys wing it, or? Well, I don't. We don't. I mean, we have an idea of where we're going. Now, mm -hmm. we don't make. I don't like to plan. You know plan plan i mean yeah. like chevy chase or anything you know? right. <laughs> <laughs> i mean and so like we normally have the first place that we're gonna go we'll like make a hotel reservation or whatever and then after that we normally just decide you know why we're doing the other thing like what we want to do next. yeah I mean, you know we don't i don't plan a lot down in detail or whatever and you know some of the places nowadays the parks are getting so busy that like we're, we're always prepared if one of them is just super swamped or whatever to just go to another yeah and that's why i went to north dakota because utah and arizona and wyoming well you were on the highway wait a minute you're on, you're, you're on the highway over the fourth of july that must have been crazy yeah. Um, it, in parts it was, but if you really, it's, if you've ever been in like a traffic jam, mm -hmm. obviously I'm sure everyone has, and the traffic is just going really slow and it's not moving, it's not moving. And then all of a sudden it just starts going and you can't really understand why, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that's like, that's kind of like what it's like when you go out West, like when you get across the Mississippi river and you're out there where there's not really anyone that lives there at least not densely populated mm -hmm. everything between like you know the crossing of the mississippi clear to like oregon uh washington oregon and california is just really sparse yeah and it there's no traffic usually hardly at all really small towns mm -hmm. even what they would consider like bigger towns in north dakota south dakota nebraska whatever mm -hmm. i mean 
they're not bigger towns you know like here they might not even be the county seat of some of your counties you know what I mean, I mean you know what I mean so that's why I like it but uh but some of the bigger parks this year are just supposedly like jam packed like uh-huh. I heard like arches and uh you know Yellowstone like Yellowstone put their thing out today where they updated their 4th of July visitors uh, amount and it was like eight and a half percent more than 2019 and 2019 was the record year or whatever so it was 10 percent busier than that so year. everybody is is taking this newly found freedom to get out there yeah. and go to these places right yeah yeah so you know that's that's why we went to some of the places that we went this year because you know it wasn't going to be busy i mean theodore roosevelt national park is one of the most beautiful national parks in the whole park service but it's so out of the way mm-hmm and most people haven't heard of it, is that it's not, it's never crowded, you know? So um, that's, you know, that's why we went. I mean, you, I think the only people that really visit Theodore Roosevelt National Park usually are mostly people on their way to or on their way from Glacier in uh, northern Montana, yeah. you know? I mean, that's most of their traffic is people going to Glacier or coming from Glacier. So that's why we went there. I mean, it was nice. I mean, uh, you know, we saw right there in the road you know we stopped and just observed you know they have wild horses out there there were wild horses you, you take your, you take your you take your 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 vacation seriously i mean yeah. you, in other words when it's time to take a vacation and it's uh, you got some time off you get the hell out of dodge right yeah i mean we usually do at least once a year mm-hmm. i mean we we do a lot of trips every year but we normally take a bigger one where we go really far away like yeah. You know, yeah. the last couple of years, especially mm-hmm. leaving the house, and then by the time we get back, has usually been somewhere between like four and five thousand miles with all of our driving everywhere. Wow! All the scenic routes and everything. Um, it's usually four or five thousand miles, and then we, but we always take a bunch of regional trips. So, you know, like in couple months or whatever we'll go do you somewhere. do you do all the driving or does your wife do some of it no i drive she she doesn't drive any at all oh really does she stay awake that feeling <laughs> you stay awake mine sleeps all the time my father used yeah. to say the best way to get my mother to fall asleep is to turn the key in the ignition <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah and that so, so so coming coming back from uh coming back from lake don pedro oh, let me check she's not here hold on okay she's not here yet. <laughs> <laughs> so coming back from Lake Don Pedro, she falls asleep, and then when like we get we pull up, she goes, "Oh, we're here already!" I'm like what the fuck? Yeah. You know what I like to do? My, my favorite thing to do is to sit there in the car, and when they're all dozing off, I I can close my eyes almost all the way, and then I start snoring while I'm driving. <laughs> And all of a sudden, they'll freak out and wake up and hit me and everything else. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. My, I my drift friend. a little bit, drift, you know, and I got the fifth wheel behind me, a 35 foot fifth wheel, and, and they get a little excited. Oh, yeah. My, my, my no, friend, just making sure you're still awake. My friend that Kevin, <clears throat> Kevin sort of knows is Ronnie. <clears throat> Whenever we come back from car shows, his, his, uh, his uh, nephew used to be in the passenger seat. <clears throat> and when you're driving home, He'd fall, he'd start falling asleep, and Ronnie does the brake check and screams, but he does it on video. So one time, Kevin, you'll see he'll do video, and you'll see him, and he goes, ah, and he hits the brakes, and he wakes up. He's done like three or four times on Facebook. It's so funny. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, it was a good time. I mean, like I said, we'll take some regional trips, too, where we'll go somewhere that's only like <clears throat> six or eight hours away, you know, like Philadelphia or We'll go to Virginia, Tennessee, see all the parks there. I mean, that's usually when usually when we visit the battle sites or stuff like that. I like to travel when it's colder, but my wife yeah. gets time off in the summer that's basically free yeah. when her work will be closed anyway. So even though that's yeah. the worst time to travel, that's when we usually have to do the visit. Can I, I like can, it when it's cold. Can I ask a very important question here? We've just been joined by Tony. What's with your hair tonight? He's still COVID, really. It, you, it does something. I don't know. It's, it's kind of. I got to get a haircut. Actually, it's getting crazy. When, when's the last time you got a haircut? I think about a month, about five weeks ago. And it's like that now. It's yeah. It gets all crazy. 
Really? And so, I was, I so, was actually so laying in my bed watching YouTube. So. Actually, I have to get a haircut. Some people pay for that. Yeah. It, it is messy in my head, though. I was kind of getting pillow head, though. I was laying like that on it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. No, you're talking about driving. You know, I'm worried about driving now. Um, I lately have been very tired. I mean, I, I, I kind of am like, I'm somewhat in a fog sometimes. And I'm afraid that if I drive, uh, I'm going to have to drive like that. Although, I don't know, maybe getting behind the wheel of a car will suddenly wake me up. But I don't know if I want to take the chance. You know? Do you have a license right now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? Just, uh, they just give it to old people all the time, huh? You don't have to go in and take an eye test or anything. I wow. don't. No, I, I, uh, I, I got my new, uh, this time it was nine years. It was after 10 years I got a new license. And you have to uh, take an eye test. But I, if you go to your doctor, like your uh, optometrist or your, uh, your ophthalmologist, uh, and he gives you the eye test, that he just signs something, and you just turn that in, so they don't even have to test you. So, and my eyes were fine the last time. Yeah. Of course, what's to say my eye? What's to say I don't go blind in that nine-year period? Not in California. Huh? <laughs> they don't do that in California. What do you mean they don't do what in California? Uh, DMV is everything. They know everything. Well, wait a minute. But wait a minute. L let's say my eyesight starts going. All right? It just starts going. I'm getting older. It can, in a year, it could change completely. You know? How do they know? Oh, it's <laughs> true. Yeah, I have how to do wear they glasses know? at night. And if since I, can, it's, it's, I have to wear glasses at night. But mm -hmm. if I go down there and pass the test while during the day... While I'm there, I can see the chart at, during the day fine. And they say, okay, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I want to know, you know, if my eyesight suddenly starts going bad next year, I still got a nine year, <laughs> eight, eight more years to skate. Exactly. Not in California. Know. Not in California. Uh, Not in California. What? Yeah, at your age, I think it's 75 and above. Mm -hmm. You get a yearly test now. A year or every two years. I don't know. Oh, really? Something like that. A year or every two years. Not every here. Truck driver, it's every year. Not here. Sometimes every six months. No. Wow. No. Depending, it's every six months. No. Your medical has to come up. No, yeah, no, nothing, nothing like that. But anyways, I just don't know if I'm, if I'm capable of driving without like getting tired or not being fully aware of stuff around me. So I'm kind of worried about it. And then I think, well, I want to go on vacation. When we go on vacation, we go to Europe. I rent a car. I drive all over Europe. I don't know if I can do that again. So what do we do? How do we have our vacation? I guess yeah. it's time to take a cruise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the driving gets, you know, the, the driving gets tough, but I mean, I like it just because I, that's how you see things. Well, I used I mean, to I love, I, I love driving, yeah. you know, I love I driving, but I just, I live in New York. There's no reason to own a car in New York. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, do you have a car, Tony? I imagine you do. Uh, actually, I told Checky this. I was I promised him I would take driving or like refresher courses. I have a driver's license and I can use my dad's car. My brother uses it, and my brother has a car. So I'm thinking about taking refresher courses because I don't I haven't driven in a while, a couple of years really. What I mean? What what, do you, what kind of refresher course do you need for driving? Well, I haven't driven in I would say about. Eight years? So see, I haven't driven in like, I would say three to four years. But you drove more than. And me. I'm worried I that I that, that I get behind the wheel of a car and I don't know what the hell I'm doing, you know. Well, he he checked. He said if you're going to drive, he said he's right. I wouldn't just jump on a car. I would take some ref, like some refresher courses because I renewed my license. You yeah. know, I just I just stopped driving then. Really, I didn't. You know, yeah. I, just well, I renewed driving. my license. You know, and they just they just gave me a new one. You know. And I got I got the extra special one too. I got the extra special one. Like even like Josh, when they drove, like I would imagine like like in New York, the one thing I didn't like about it, it was so congested here. Like I would imagine by him, like Josh, I picture it's more open. Here it's like they're always going through red lights. It's gotten worse here, my brother. Shecky says he's he's afraid to drive now. Uh because he, he said people are just so crazy. Alex, they go me and my brother yeah. just came back. They go through red lights like it's nothing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it sucks. You know, we definitely. I mean, you, have, well, you always have to pass through large cities. You know, I mean, like going out in Chicago, it took like a mm -hmm. fucking hour to get through there. I mean, you know, it was in the middle of the day too. It was like noon. It wasn't even like 
five in the evening. I mean, it was they're, just like well, probably oh, not oh, you. Well, That's you know, I mean, if I'm in, if, let's say I, I I start my trip in Paris, and let's say I rent a car in Paris. Have you ever tried to drive out of Paris? I was never out of it. Imagine it's terrible. It's yeah? it's a, it's pretty terrible. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I, mean, yeah. I drove in. I drove in Rome, and that was crazy. Rome was supposed to be horrible. My, trying to find my hotel, and all the stupid streets are short and small, and then Italian. I couldn't understand anything. Well, that they yeah. have what they have there in in Europe, uh, and it's common, are circles. Hmm. And but it, circle. you have to learn how to get off of that circle at the right time, <laughs> right? Because if you don't, then you gotta go around again oh, to there. make the exit, and maybe again, and pretty soon you're like the, uh, you know, the, the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, what do you call it, the lions in, the, in, the, in, in the, the story of Little Black Sambo, you turn into butter, you know? Uh, it, uh, it was just, it's just. I mean, it, I, I, what we do is you just like, you know, when you pass these places, Chicago, whatever, you know, I mean, you just, it's a small portion of like an overall bigger deal that you put up with to get the reward of seeing everything else. I mean, yeah. look, like I firmly believe that everyone can travel however they like. I mean, I would never tell anyone, oh, you should do it this way or that way, like whatever makes you happy. But I just will never understand how a person could like live here, drive to the airport and fly to Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and get off and, you know, drive right into Yellowstone Park and, and go around for a day or two and then go back and fly home. And, yes, I understand they went to Yellowstone, but the 2,000 miles between here and there is full of a lot of things. I mean, you know, when we went out there and came back and we were all the way diagonally through Wyoming and crisscrossing the state, I mean, just – just pronghorn running in the wild and herds at you know 50 60 miles an hour whatever alongside the road and wild horses and scenery and it's like you didn't see any of that from a, an airplane yeah you know i mean uh, you know black bears climbing trees and i mean i mean you know but look some people that's how they like i'm sorry i ain't going anywhere with bears yeah well <laughs> the last time we left that's the most dangerous on creature park, on the planet it was funny, though, like the last time that we left Grand Teton National Park, we had just left. I mean, you could still see the Tetons and Rearview Mirror and everything, and we were kind of on this curvy mountainous road. <laughs> They've got one of these flashing signs on the side of the road that, you know, they use for traffic control and all that, and it says, Caution, bears may be in roadway, do not approach. You know, and that's the message. It's just flashing. And I'm like, I swear to you. As soon as I read the sign, we go around a curve. There's a guy riding his bike, and I'm like, "Fuck that!" <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if it had a shotgun on the fucking handlebars or whatever, maybe, but right. I didn't carry a shotgun. <laughs> it looked like a grizzly bear fighting type of guy. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna I'll bet that bear says, "Boy, my appetizer's on two wheels right now." But I, I'm just like. <laughs> Who the fuck bikes sure. through there? I mean, with the, I don't know. I mean, maybe. It's almost as good as the bison, you know, the bison crossing and the people stopping. Yeah. To get pictures right. as close as they can and they get flipped across the road. But yeah. you know, I mean, it's, <laughs> but, so I mean, look, if you want to fly to Jackson Hole and see Yellowstone, that's perfectly fine, I guess. But yep. I think that the journey out there and back is just sometimes as rewarding as the park itself. I yeah. mean, yeah. I at least I have found it to be that way. You know? right. So that's why Plus we, part. Yeah. Yeah, when we do that, part and I, Look, I do fly I have flown. I'm not scared to fly, but I also do not like it. I think that they treat you terrible. They charge you a lot of money and Oh, flying. I, will, I, I, will I can't imagine. You, I can't imagine even flying today. That sounds dreadful. Yeah. And and I and I'm dreadful. telling you that and I know I think I've said this on here before, but someone works on airplanes and most of those guys are just like all the other mechanics i've ever met in the world they're oh, either God. drunks or drug addicts and i have literally been in the net jets building working on something for them in years past and seeing guys puking over in the fucking trash can like oh man i'm still drunk <laughs> last night man and they're fucking working on a private jet that someone's about to rent for like fifty thousand oh, dollars i'm like yeah, yeah okay yeah i fucking drive myself 
So yeah. it was the, the you, you know, you got to wonder, the guy could read a twerk wrench if he's that drunk. Was this five pounds or 50 pounds? <laughs> Let's just do five pounds on this turban. Hopefully it'll stay together. I mean, I'm just not a big fan of the avi you know, like strapping yourself into something that you have no control. Of. I mean, like I said, I've flown before. I'm, I mean, well, I'm you're being hurled in an aluminum scared. tube. Scared. I'm just, just don't trust big companies because they are all fucking cut corners and well, make money. Guess who's, gu guess who's like, going to oh, be? I'm just getting my car and drive. Guess who's going to be? Right now, the thing that's huh. weird right now is that they're they're ta even talking about how there's a shortage of pilots. We're trying to put everybody into the seat now we can. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. sure that's great. You know, they're pulling people. Yeah. Even they're even saying that there's a shortage of uh, military people coming out. You know, and that's who usually who they like to hire is the military right. pilots. Mm -hmm. They're not being able to put them in the seat. And that's even scary. You know, what, what are they doing? Going out and getting these guys that are playing video games and say, oh, yeah, you can fly this thing. You know, it's guess, the guess, guess who, guess guess thing in the world to think about. Guess who's going to yeah. be flying on Sunday? <laughs> uh, Charles, uh, what's his name? Branson. Oh, yeah. What's his first name? Oh. Uh, Richard. Richard Branson. Yeah, he's he's he got he's got the his place. he's got his galactic space galactic or whatever it's called, okay. and um, uh, he. But this isn't like a rocket that goes up. It's attached to an airplane that takes it up, and then the rocket goes from there into oh, yeah. essentially. Oh, is that that solar one? No, it's not solar. No, okay. It's not solar. It's, I know it, which one you're talking about. It the basically, they send it up in an airplane, yeah. but it's strapped to the airplane. Yeah. And then at a certain point, they go, okay, they we're, go to we're going to space now, and they're up there about 10,000 feet, 20,000 feet. I don't know how high they go. It's up to the atmosphere, and then they take it up to the atmosphere, then shoot it up into in the stratosphere. And he's, yeah. he's going up in it, which is, you know... It's kind of the sissy version because I don't think it's particularly that dangerous. Okay. And I like Richard Branson. I don't want to see any ill befall him. Well, On the other hand, I've, I've got my fingers crossed that Bezos's rocket explodes. Okay. Because <laughs> lately I... The flying dildo. I've, huh? The flying dildo. <laughs> well, to begin with, of all the rockets... I mean, the amazing things that... Uh, of what's his name? Tesla uh, is doing... Um, Elon, Elon Musk, Musk is doing. It's just incredible. I don't know if you follow this on uh, on YouTube, but every day they, they got a new rocket going up. If you go down to Texas, they've got them all lined up. Okay, here's the one for tomorrow. Here's the one for the day afterwards. Okay, we're going to tell Oh, that one blew up. Well, don't forget. We'll fix this one before we... I mean, he is doing amazing stuff. But Bezos has got like Blue Horizon. Right with a picture of a feather on the side of it, you know, and and uh, uh, I just don't see that he's going to do very well in the space race. Looks like a big vibrator. But he's he's going up with his brother and some old lady. Really? Yeah. Uh, she'll he's, be happy. Yeah, and they'll be doing that. When are they supposed to do that? I think later in July, isn't it? Or he's going to take a trailer. Trump's going to ride in the trailer. What, what what's it, what was that? I was I didn't get that joke. You don't get. You're gonna have to start explaining your jokes. It was sarcasm. Sorry. Wait a minute. Trump is gonna have to go in a trailer. Yeah. Well, Bezos had said the next thing he'll do is he'll tow a trailer of you know, and people can rent the trailers, and I don't know. I, what? I, and I was praying is, that maybe Trump would be. What is he? Guy. He's never talked about people renting trailers. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm glad you you follow him that close. I don't. No, I follow him quite closely because I think, quite frankly, years from now, long after all of us are gone, they're going to be like spaceports named after uh, Elon Musk because of be what a space his toilet named after Trump. Now, I don't have to explain that. Come on now. Yes, you do. I mean, it doesn't make sense. You know, I mean, I, I can think of a million demeaning jokes we can tell about Trump. But nobody will laugh. But a don't space have... toilet named after him? I mean, what's what's that? You know. Porta potty. 
No. Where they already have porta potties, and they're named after a Bob Porta. I don't know if you knew that. No, I didn't know that. Actually. Bob Porta was the guy who invented the porta potty. Yeah. Who knew? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you did. Obviously. I'm just passing you a little uh, information. Okay, there. that's good. That's not I even funny. Was short for portable. <laughs> yeah, I always thought so too. <laughs> I did. I'm sorry. I'm Maria. sorry. D By the way, then you probably don't know this, but uh, um, um, what am I thinking of? I f f forgot the uh, joke. Now you're just gone. Are you know it was named after John Crapper? Well, the, the toilet was named after the well. Uh, John Crapper invented the toilet, and yeah. it was the Crapper toilet. Yeah, and that's why it became known as the crapper. And you take a crap. Now, it comes from the name John Crapper. You're, the emission yeah. from your body has been given a name that is, you know. But you don't take a crap. You give a crap. Hopefully. Well, so, no, you take or a you crap. Don't give a crap. You take a crap. You don't give a crap. If you give a crap, then you care about stuff. I don't take it. I, I, don't give I give mine. You give first. yours, you give a crap? Oh, okay. Well, I'm, I'm a donor. <laughs> give it away. We don't take The conversation it. is going into the toilet. Let's change the subject. Hey, thank you very much. It's uh, going to ruin uh, Kevin's uh, peanuts. As George Carlin's routine, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but, but, uh, but Charlie, Charlie likes anything. travel. Yeah. I mean, I know Charlie likes travel talk. I've talked to him uh, off. Yeah, I was going to say, when you're talking about the national parks, I've been watching a lot of travel, you know, the RV videos and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You're saying the national parks are packed. You can't they get are. in the parks. And the yeah. big thing now is uh, RVs, too. That people are just buying them things up left and right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking of selling mine. I might get good money for it. Yeah. I think if I were younger, I might buy an RV, you know, for vacation. Oh, they're awesome, man. I have a great time when I take mine out. You know, I'm, and every time I go over to where it's stored and I put something away and I smell it, I go, I come home and I say, let's go somewhere to my wife. Yeah. He says yeah. the porta potty's leaking again. No. No, no, it's very clean. It's, is it? Yep. You know, How long? Left. You said forty-two feet. No, that's the truck and the trailer, but oh. it's a thirty. It's a thirty. Thirty-two footer. Well, I want to get one of the ones that's all in one. We took one of those to Burning Man one year. We rented a uh, Winnebago. Huge Winnebago, big mother Winnebago, and uh, that was pretty good living. <laughs> you know, that was pretty nice. We're out in the middle of the desert where nothing should live. We turn on the air conditioning, we're feeling great. You know. Yep. It's called glamping. Yeah, and and sometimes the fifth wheel, so it's nice. You can disconnect the disconnect the trailer and go driving around. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. You've seen it. The greatest thing about uh, the uh, uh, Burning Man used to be held in the, uh, or is still held in the uh, uh, Black Rock Desert of Nevada. Uh, and um, you can go there. What we did, it is the largest single landmass, empty landmass in the United States. Okay? Uh -huh. So big that they test cars out there. They test rocket cars out there. And what you can do, you can start at one end of it. It's 40, I think it's 40 miles long, something like 40 or 50 miles long. And you can just go straight ahead and not hit anything for 40 um, miles. So, uh, I, you know, I, I have trouble You're believing. not letting me finish my story, Alan. I was going somewhere with that. Really, it was 40 miles. And what I did one night, I got out on the, on the playa, they call it, and I made sure I wasn't aiming towards where the Burning Man Festival was. And I started driving at 100 miles an hour. And do this, try this sometime. And then I turned off the lights of the car. And I went for as long as I could before I had to turn the lights back on because, quite frankly, I was starting to crap shit out of my pants, okay? <laughs> uh, but really, you knew that you could go for, well, it's 40, 40 miles, let's say. You're traveling 100 miles an hour. How long would it take you to go the 40 miles? Maybe 30 minutes, something like that, 
right? So you know you could go 30 minutes with the lights turned off at 100 miles an hour and not hit anything, nothing. But I wasn't going to take the chance. I think I turned it off for about 10 seconds, and then I had to turn it back on. Yeah. <laughs> so you said they test rockets out there. Rocket, rocket cars. cars. Rocket cars. So a, a, a rocket car is typically a jet engine driven mm. vehicle, yep. correct? Yep. So the reason why they test them on the salt flats. That isn't, not, a, that isn't a salt flat. I know. Well, I'm going to make a point here. You want me to finish? So because rockets tend to suck in small things, very, and people too, if they're close enough to it, like a jet engine, and that's what these things are jet engines. Mm -hmm. at turbines and they tend to have a, a pretty good reach and so to, to go across the sand makes no sense because it would suck all the sand in and that's why they go across the salt flats when they test these cars well there's no sand out there either on the, on the black rock desert it's basically oh. you go out there you feel like you're on the moon it's like completely parched oh okay completely I've, parched I and they and the, the and the world area. land speed record the world land speed record was set on the Black Rock Desert in Nevada. Huh? Really dusty, right? Well, yes. uh, and not not, not terribly dusty. No, um, hmm. you know, I mean, there was there is dust there, but uh, they they test all the really fast cars out there, and the land speed record is was set in the Black Rock Desert, Nevada. There's really nowhere else to really do it. Even even the uh, Great Salt Lake isn't big enough to do the get up to the kind of speeds they want to get up to and go the kind of distance they have to go to get to that speed. So they don't they they used to test cars out on the uh, out on the Great Salt Lake, but uh, you know it's funny about the Great Salt Lake. Have you ever been to it? Yeah, there's one in California where they well, do. No, but I'm talking about the, I'm talking about the big one. The big I drove by it. I drove by it, but a lot, lot of guys go there for the car stuff. Yeah. All the, the yeah. flats. Yeah. But the thing is that that's liquid. But it is so thick because it's salt that you can just drive across it. Yeah. And uh, um, uh, it's it's strange. I walked out on it. It's a very strange feeling because you're really, it's like, you feel like God or something. You're walking on water, yeah. you know, and you really are. It's a strange, strange feeling. But Actually, it says the, the playa is 100 miles. Uh, is oh, wait, it 100 miles? 100 miles north of Reno, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, okay. He's going, Jesus, that's yeah, a long it's, what's a ta what, what town is it near we were? I, I always used to remember these things, and I don't anymore. Uh, there's a town right up uh, there that it's right on the base of that everybody goes through. It's in Humboldt County, Ger Gerlach. Nevada. Gerlach, Gerlach. Yeah. Gerlach. Yeah. And we used to go in every day. We would go in to Gerlach, which we had to travel like 30 miles to get to Gerlach. But we'd go yeah. to Gerlach because that was the closest diner. And we would just hang out in the diner. Because when we went to, uh, when we went to uh, uh, Burning Man, there were, the, the top year that we were there, I think 10,000 people showed up. Um, we went there when there were only 3,000 people there. And then one year when there were 5,000 people there. And then the next year was something like, I think, 10,000 people. It gets up to 35, 40,000 now, maybe even more. And yeah. we had a deal. My friend Paul and I had a deal going that we would keep going to Burning Man until somebody got killed. Mm. And that year, I think three people got killed. One wow. guy was in a uh, uh, in a uh, sleeping bag, sleeping out on the playa, and some guy uh, with his lights, his lights off on off his car ran, ran yeah. right over the guy and killed him. That was one. Really? There was wow. somebody. There was an accidental gun thing, and I can't remember what the other one was. And so we just said, "Well, that's it. We're not coming back. That's the, that's it for us and Burning Man." And I'm glad it is because now all that go up there are all these yuppies with their, you know. It's it's it, it, companies send their their employees there as a training yeah. thing. It's it's not it's not the same as it was. It's not no. organic like it was. Oh, you, you know what? It, it what was great the the uh, second year I was there. Well, they had this every year, but the second year we yeah. went, went second. 
third, uh, we our first year there, second year, and then third year. We did did them in a row, and I think they were something like close to the tenth year of it being held because the first ones were held in San Francisco, at the beach, the Burning Man, and then they had to move it out to the desert. But anyway, uh, we uh, we went to this thing. And it was uh, it was it was wonderful, you know. And the, what they had that I, we really enjoyed, they had a drive-by shooting range out in the desert, out in a certain part of the desert. They put all these stuffed animals and everything, and then you could drive by and shoot your gun out the window and shoot at all these targets and bunnies and things like that, you know. But they stopped doing that because they felt it was. It, because it was getting larger and larger that it was getting to be too uh, dangerous. So. so the Salt Lake you're talking about, I had to look it up, is the Bonneville Salt Lakes in Utah. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. That's the, that's where they set their land it, speed right. record. That N damn black, no, the land black. speed record was set in bl at Black Rock. Yeah, not according to Wikipedia, but I'll believe you anyhow. So yeah. They do send, according to the thing in Wikipedia, they do set land speed records where you where um where you're talking about but i i always i always thought that it was sandy out there so i i'm mistaken no it's, it's parched it's very parched it's uh, not sandy okay. it's there's no sand out there i've never been out there so there is dust told me it was there, sandy. there is dust but there's not sand lava beds and alkali flats y y yes okay. yes yeah. It's it's almost That's like you're on the moon. It's like cracked and parched, and you know, uh, it's a very okay. parched uh, atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not. A, when you call it a black rock desert, it's not a desert like a desert with sand with dunes and things like that. It's not that yeah, kind well, of desert. Okay. Well, I was misinformed. You're right. It, well, I'm you right. are in many cases. So, what? Well, don't stop now. You know. Um, That's let me see here. What ha what happened to Brian? Where's Brian? Where did Brian go? Did he? Uh, well, his screen's still there. Huh? He got called away, I guess. I may yeah. have gotten called away. He has went huh? on vacation. Uh, he went on vacation. Yes, Jeff. I think that uh, they they went as fast as four hundred miles an hour on that. Oh no. Place. Oh yeah, yeah. Mach Faster. one or. Oh yeah, Mach one point two or something like that. Oh, actually, faster than the speed of sound. Huh. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. I, well, it says right here for Black Rock. Let's see what it says here. Uh, BLM is out there, but in this case, it stands for Bureau of Land Management. Uh, the land speed record set there, Mach one point zero four in nineteen ninety seven. That's pretty goddamn fast. That's you, faster. You're, than you're, miles you're, you're retina detaching low gear at that speed. Yeah, you bet. Yeah, yeah. yeah I guess. It's amazing. amazing. I think if the rocket crashes, that could be where the new Trump Library goes. <laughs> no. You know, just if, knock off the Trump jokes. Number one, you're mentioning Trump far too much on this program. I love the guy. And I wish he would become president again. Oh, really? August 13th. Oh, not, no, not August really. August 15th, he's going to be president 13th. again. 13th. 13th. Yeah. 13th? Why yep. Why is the 13th? Like what, no, what is what is it about the 13th that is so significant? It's probably a Friday. Probably. Yeah. That's what I <laughs> But I was thinking Friday the 13th. I, 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 uh, I think it is. August? Well, wait a minute. Yeah, August 13th is a Friday. <clears throat> you should have told him it's going to be April 1st. April 1st would have been much better. Just ask the yeah. so he'll tell you. Well, we were mentioning this last night. Did you see the videos of his, of his rally last weekend? All 27 people. Well, uh, not a lot of people. And what people who were there about halfway through were all leaving. They were all walking away. Uh, he didn't. He didn't do very well on that. And then this weekend he's going to be at uh, in Las Vegas at that uh, oh, McGregor uh, two shows in one night. MMA fight thing, whatever. Oh, oh he's he going to McGregor. That fight yeah, Colin. Colin. yeah. <laughs> What'd you say, Tony? I, I could be wrong, but I heard that they I, don't, I heard they canceled the fight because somebody's camp came down with COVID. I don't know if I heard it correctly. Really? 
Well, all, 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 I know, all I know that is that on Hulu, fight. on Hulu, oh, was the other fight, fight okay? It was one of the boxing yeah. matches. Yeah, on Hulu, yeah. on Hulu, they're selling uh, the ability for you to watch it on pay per view. Sixty eight bucks to watch this thing. Why would I want to watch these guys doing their mixed martial arts, right? Come on. But Alex, I have to say one thing though. If this was the real boxing, maybe like Hagler Hearns when you had like the Four Kings, Hagler Hearns, Sugar Ray, Durant, that was worse to me. These guys to me are in boxing when they're kicking each other. Now I mentioned this last night, and I guess uh, uh, Allen's had time now to make up a joke about it. But uh, Donald Trump is showing up to that match. Take it, Alan. Is uh, it? Yeah, I hear that him and Wayne Newton are fighting. <laughs> he lives out there, Wayne Newton. <laughs> when, when are you gonna say the joke? Sorry, I don't know. I, I didn't. I didn't. But t Tony, around 2000, we used to go to Vegas all the time, and yeah, we used to see like De La Hoya and Trinidad, oh. all those type of boxers. That's when boxing was. I was out there when De La Hoya fought. Me and my, my brother took me out there. I was out there. De La Hoya fought on a Friday night. I was out there when Tupac got shot. I oh, was watching yeah. a football game yeah, Sunday night. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe you know, would, they actually. Are you, are you admitting to fights. having killed Tupac? I was out there, Alex. I was watching a football game. I came out of the hotel with my brother. I said, "What the hell is going on over here?" And I'm going to tell you something. I was scared that weekend. We landed Friday night. We got off the plane. That whole strip had a gang element. It, you knew something was like, you didn't want to leave the room, the hotel. It was just like, it was just a bad vibe all around. When I was out there, Alex, for the De La Hoya fight, Brian, we couldn't watch it. Because, oh, I want to watch the fight. I was like, okay. They won't let you watch the fight. You have to pay. You can't watch it. You have to go into like a pay-per-view area, like in a separate room. We did. And so I didn't go into the room as us group. We're just going to walk around. They yeah. came out of the match, Alex. I'll never forget this. They were throwing chairs. <clears throat> what was going on? They said he threw the fight, Deloy. He was winning the whole fight. You know, they lost money. And then the guys are yelling the last four rounds. He didn't even punch him. He was dancing. Deloy, they was yelling. You know, these guys lost money. It was just like that whole weekend. Then Sunday night came, and then it just filtered out. We didn't leave. But I was scared. I was like, I didn't want to leave my room. He was out there when he got shot. I didn't know what the hell happened. I've I mean, only been to one life. boxing match in my entire life. You would probably like it. You never, never went. I would like to see one. No, I went to a, a, a what do you call it? Heavyweight title match. Oh, you did? With Muhammad Ali. Oh, you saw? Oh, wow. That's big. Come on. Uh, and it was in Houston, Texas. And it was a guy by the name of, I'm trying to remember his name now. But what happened is he had, uh, he was a boxer. And he had gotten into an altercation with the police, or the police got into an altercation with him and shot him in the stomach. And he, he, uh, he completely, you know, lost all his body tone, everything, and had to work his way back. Oh. And in order to make this guy enough money to take care of himself for the rest of his life, Muhammad Ali agreed to fight him in Houston, Texas, oh, in a heavyweight that. title fight. I'm trying to remember his name mm -hmm. right now. He was, I mean, he was the greatest, Alex, I think. I'm well, well, not, I, I mean, check, you saw that plan. And he got you let me I finish the story, him. Tony. Oh, I'm sorry. I get excited. When so I'm anyway, right. he did this match. So he knew the guy was, you know, he, he beat the guy, I think, in exactly. the second round, the first 30 seconds of the second yeah. round. But he did it so this guy would get a I great mean, payday. I mean, and he probably, we knew he wasn't going to hurt me. I mean, Cassius Clay, he, I mean, Ali was so... Phenomenal, yeah. really. Well, what I saw, uh, and it taught me a lot about racism, is that when he was coming, I'm going to use some words that are not nice here, but when he was coming into the ring, and this is in Houston, Texas, there are guys behind me and all around the place booing Muhammad Ali as he walks into the ring. And they're yelling out, go home, nigger, and blah, 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 you black, blah, 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 you know. I mean, just the most racist yeah. rants. And now Muhammad Ali gets in the ring, fights, wins the match, and as he's leaving, these same people who were calling him names behind me are now standing up and cheering him. He was the greatest. You know, all, I mean, is that what it takes for a black man to get respect in America to be able to beat up another black man? You know, I mean, it was, it, but it was a great lesson in racism for me because this was in Houston, Texas, which at the time was, forget it. You know, I, I lived there at the same time with Jack Bishop, and he had lived on a, the other part of town <coughs> from me. And when we went into each 
others part of town looking for each other. We drew stares like crazy. But anyway, that was that was me. The only match I've ever boxing match. Wow, I've you seen. got to try Alex. That's but I, I never, I never, I never that. liked boxing in particular because I never saw anything about it that was good about it that I could. But the thing was, my father used to love watching the matches on every Friday night. Oh, I used to watch Pabst them. Blue Ribbon would sponsor the fights on TV. All right, and right, right, my father right. would sit there and he would watch these things. And he would yell at the <laughs> screen and everything. And finally, I said, Dad, you know, you're the most decent man I know. You're the li most oh, un a a nonviolent human being I know. What do you see in boxing? It's he great. says, I like to see two people get into a ring, beat the crap out of each other, and be glad I'm neither of them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but Ali was so dynamite. I mean, it's like, just the way... He, I mean, it's, first of all, to me, it's like, it was like when you watched, I watched old fights, and I was like, can you imagine watching him live? I mean, just to, you're right, just to get in yeah, that way and I mean, get into that yeah, yeah. shape and that yeah. mindset, that's yeah. tough. Yeah, I mean. yeah, well, also, you don't, you, you, a lot of times you don't realize it because you're watching it on TV, but he was massive. How big was he? I mean, he, he I'm only tall. watching old documentaries. He was, he was tall. He was tall. He was 6'4". I, 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 I not only and saw him no that night. That but I saw him in Houston when he had to go to the courthouse to plead not guilty or whatever to the, the whole problem he was having with the government. And uh, I watched the, uh, the pre I was there for the press conference and I saw this guy and I went, boy, he's bigger than he looks like on TV. I mean, he was, he was a massive guy. And of course you'd have to be to be a heavyweight. You couldn't just be this yeah, little bad. tiny wimp, you know. Uh, but I wish I could remember the name of the, uh, I got to look up the thing because I have I have a book. Uh, right Robert you know, says Charlie? his name was Ernie Terrell. No, it wasn't, Ernie, no, no, it, no, it was it, it, no, uh, 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 1967. No, it wasn't Ernie Terrell. Um, okay. right. I'm trying to remember the guy's yeah, name. Uh, he had a he had a, a a middle name, you know, like Killer or something like that. Uh, <laughs> uh, Ernie Killer Terrell. No, no, <laughs> no, but it wasn't Ernie Terrell. He did a few of those fights that were pretty, you know, just fight and get out type things. And they would well, play some of them. Cleveland Williams. Cleveland Williams? Cleveland Williams, absolutely. That was it. Is that it? Cleveland, I think Mad Dog Williams or something was his name. Uh, and he, yeah, that's who he fought. And if you look it up, it probably talks about him getting shot by the Houston Police Department. And, and having to come back from that and get... They missed. Be, because they turned, when he got they shot, they he was... Pretty much mm -hmm. in line for a heavyweight title bout, you know. In and, 1966, I wasn't even born yet. <clears throat> yeah, that would wow. be, that'd be oh, right. Shit. I, I was there in 19. When, 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 when I was there, yeah, I was there in 1966. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was nine. Yeah, we would see some uh, when we go to the fights all the time. We go into some clubs. Our friends were DJs, and we would see some of these the featherweight guys. You know, we would recognize some of those guys, and those guys were tiny, 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 the lightest bantam weight than those guys. Oh really yeah, small. well those guys are tiny and small yeah. and light, and you could blow them over with a feather, you know. But uh, anyway, but I just, I just never saw much in boxing. It never appealed to me. I didn't right. see that as a, you know. But I mean, I understand why Muhammad Ali was great, and I think he was great for a lot more reasons than just yeah. his boxing prowess. Well, his war uh, stance, but he didn't want to go get drafted. No, I mean, but I mean, he he was he was I think, um, I, I think he was a, a good role model for Black Americans. Yeah, you know, and uh, what was done to him was terrible. I mean, robbing him of all those really good years of his boxing. Uh, yeah, he was, he was uh, which right. they did. I mean, it was right in the middle of when he would have been in his prime. But when he came back, he, he came back with a whole different way of boxing. You know, the rope-a-dope thing and stuff like that, where he, he you know, he wasn't as, as, as good a boxer as he was, you know. But anyway. Uh, and then, uh, let's see here. Did I ever see any other matches? Well, I, oh, I've been to World Wrestling Federation. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, what do they call it? The yearly thing they hold. I've done that, you know. But I, 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 I've never been much into that kind of stuff. I don't think I would go to a, 
mixed martial arts uh, fight. You're not much into sports, are you, Alex? Well, I'm. You know, it's strange. I love baseball, uh, but I don't know much about it. But I love going out to a baseball game. There's nothing more American and bucolic than going to a baseball game. Am I right, Charlie? You can watch all the umpires cheat. Sitting there in the sun with your friends, eating hot dogs, yeah, having a beer. beer. American pastime. Yeah. yeah. And not Drinking much beer, happens at a base dogs. not much happens at a baseball game, but when it does, it is exciting as hell and it usually happens towards the end of the game. So I can but never if, understand if you know, Huh? What, what? If you know baseball though, every pitch is something. Yeah. Yeah, there, there's a strategy in every pitch. You know, oh yeah, no, I, 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 then that third strike, they're going to get them on the outside or something. You know, there, there's, there's build up when you're really into it. Yeah, but then every now and then something happens and it's phenomenally exciting. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, yeah. And I just, I just love the whole game. I love the lore of the game, the history of the game. It's, it's, you know, it, it's. I like a, when the umpire gets hit. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, right. Charlie. It, didn't go over very well. You know, it doesn't go well with Charlie. Charlie does no. not like to get hit with He's balls. probably been hit, too, hasn't he? One time. I've only been hit one time. Oh, God. It's yeah. no fun. Yeah, yeah. What, what part of your anatomy? I hit in the head. Broke my glasses. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. A friend of mine does umpiring out here for a little league, and he squats down behind the, what do you call the guy, behind the home plate? Catcher. catcher, catcher. He squats down behind the catcher, and the ball hits the the doesn't it, it hits the bat, bounces on the ground and bounces back up and hits him in the groin, yeah. and he's unprotected. Why did you point to your neck when you said groin? I don't know. I mean, my, my neck felt like a groin. I don't know. I was itching. You know, I got you know skin yeah. disease. I'm yeah. Jewish. Yeah. Yeah. Well, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Let's start checking temperature. I always wore a cup for Little League because that's a baseball. That wasn't softball. Oh, yeah. yeah well, he didn't wear a cup because he figured that the ball would always be caught by the catcher. Well, you do. <laughs> you, you, yeah. you, you, you um, uh, umpire baseball, right, Charlie? No, softball. Softball. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. That's a whole different game. Yeah. You know? It still hurts if you get hit in the groin with a softball. Yeah. I well, I've never got hit in the groin with a softball. I've never got hit in the groin with a baseball. Yeah, yeah. Neither yeah. one sounds fun. Anyway, there's our theme song, and we've made it to the end of the program tonight. We talk sports, so I get to keep my sports Emmy for another year. Oh, no. Like, we didn't have to hear the story, at least. <laughs> Whoa. We didn't have to hear the story again. Yeah, no, I'm not. Uh, you, everybody's heard the story on how I got a sports Emmy. So and, we're all sitting here biting our nails to the news next week. Yeah. yeah, it's it's pretty pretty phenomenal actually. To be honest with you. Yes, Jeff. Thank you so much, Jeff. Good having you here all the time. You too, Kevin. Wonderful. I love Alan here because he tells such great Trump, Trump jokes. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, and, and by the way, uh, well, uh, of course, uh, 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 Charlie Wallace. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Brian. And I got to ask you a quick question, uh, Tony. Because uh, Kathleen wrote me and complained to me that I shouldn't I shouldn't do jokes about you because people have said how they hate the fact that we go after you. I have you ever you. minded any of the no, jokes I I've said about you? I, I, fuck Tony. Fuck you, Tony. You See, we haven't had one for all week. I, I, I mean, I have week. Week. the wallpaper, everything. You haven't minded any of that. Have I you? actually welcome it. You make me laugh. Right, I mean, exactly. And, you and you're a fun guy and you take a joke. Yeah. So, hey, Kathleen, you heard it from him. He hasn't yeah, bothered I, I told you. It, so no. you shouldn't be either. I anyway. haven't had one all week, so fuck you, Tony. Every, okay. Everybody... <laughs> Everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye back at you. And uh, thank you for having joined us, okay? Bye-bye. There they go. That's our citizen panel, folks. They uh, they were here tonight, and they will be here again, I'm sure, next week. And I got through the show without uh, getting woozy. So that's, that's always good. Um, uh, the uh, intersection is next with Jack Bishop. Uh, and uh, he will be here uh, taking your calls at Skype, on Skype at GabNet Live. I'm Alex Bennett. See you again. 
Monday at 4 o'clock for our pop-up show. And then, of course, as always, uh, next uh, Tuesday night, 1030. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? And please, get a vaccination. Otherwise, wear a mask. Good night, everybody. Have a nice weekend.